Hello, and welcome to a Fiber Collective YouTube channel. Today's episode is all about project bags. Welcome to a Fiber Collective YouTube channel. My name's Claire. I am a knitter and knitwear designer living in the rural high desert of Southeast Idaho. I live with my other half, my son, and our dog. This channel is all about knitting. We go over topics like what I'm working on, recent FOs, pattern releases, subscription box unboxings, and a whole lot more. Today's episode is all about project bags and what's in mine. So I think in one of my earlier episodes, I kind of mentioned that I was a bag hoarder among scissors and pins and other things. So this stack here is just a small assortment of the project bags that I have. These are a few of my favorites and we're going to go over each of them and why I like them, things that I would change and other things. So I guess to start, we are going to go over, let's start with what's in my bag because I think that's probably most important. Actually, that's a lie. We're going to go over the stack of bags first. So starting. We have project bags. <laughs> this is, um, it's probably a little absurd, but it's what I have and I like bags. So we're just gonna start small and we're gonna work our way up to the big ones. So small bags, zippers. Um, generally I don't like zippers, but for small projects, I think they're great. So I like to use small bags for socks and notions and just little loose odds and ends that go inside the bigger bags. This particular one is really cute. It's just a lightweight fabric. It's got a little tag on the sides so that way you can connect it to things. It is a Dutch company. I am 90% sure I found this one on Etsy. I don't speak Dutch, so I am probably going to butcher the crap out of this, but I believe it says Tien and Miep. T I E N little E N M I E P. If somebody could help me pronounce that, that would be so I'm very sorry if I butchered that, but um, awesome little project bags. I have several of these. They're just, they like said they're great. They go a little bit bigger. These are great for sock projects. I really love the medium and large size ones for socks. This is a waxed canvas bag, which 
sometimes I have I have various thoughts. I really like the flimsy ones just for stashing things. The sturdier ones that have wax canvas have their own purpose because they can stand upright and I think that's awesome. So Tenny Casey, I found her on Etsy. Oh gosh, it was several years ago, but she makes awesome product. I have three of her bags sitting on my lap as we speak. And she makes a variety of things. She's also expanded into like bucket bags if you like the round ones instead. And she also does um, tote bags, which I have downstairs in my office. I didn't bother to bring them up because, well, I use these of hers a lot more often. I don't really use tote bags anymore because I never go anywhere because I'm a hermit. That's just the way it is. So medium sized zip bags are awesome for sock projects. Stepping up, we go into drawstring bags. These are also, these are my favorite and I'll tell you why. And there's multiple ones. I have Tanay's and I have French Supply. So, um, first off, she has pockets, cause pockets. Dresses with pockets, bags with pockets, it's all the same and you can't go wrong. So, this one has, first off, it has the beautiful, this is a lighter weight canvas. I wanna say it's canvas. It's not a wax canvas though. Um, I could tell you who designs this fabric, but I don't know off the top of my head because I'm having a royal brain fart, but it's very pretty. And then it also has this heavier lining in it. And then it also has the grommets if you like to separate your work. I never really understood the grommet thing. Um, it's just never really understood it. But if you use them, then kudos to you. Her bags have grommets. She also has these wax canvas ones in various colors. I'm not sure if she makes these anymore, but drawstring bags are just awesome because you cinch them closed and you call it a day. You can carry it the way it is. Usually if I go into doctor's offices or wherever I have a canvas bag and it's cinched shut and then I just carry it like this or some people carry them on their wrist and knit from them. I can't knit and walk at the same time. I can chew gum and walk at the same time. Knitting and walking at the same time doesn't happen. I will either screw up my knitting or I will trip and fall to my death. One or the other. Um, but she also has Tanae also has these wax canvas bags that are just, they're lovely, they're hardy, they stand up by themselves, and usually wax canvas gets softer with time. Um, this one hasn't been used too much because I have another one downstairs. Where did all your money go, Claire? Project bags. So stepping into another one, so this is where Tanae's bags differ from fringe supply. Um, she has one big pocket in hers, but hers are heavier and they're a lot sturdier, which I like. If you like the softer ones, sadly fringe supply is no longer. I never really got the whole story on that. I was really sad to see them go because, I don't know, I think the bags are kind of iconic and they were one of the like fancier project bags that I found when I first started knitting. And it was one of those, man, I really want those because everybody has one and they're beautiful. Like you go from, I don't have one up here, but I had a, just like a little lightweight canvas screen printed drawstring bag that was, I mean, they're cheap, but they serve their purpose. But you know, like, why would you want one of those when you can have one of these? Um, 
So Fringe Supplies also has, they're lighter weight first off, they're not lined by any means where all of Tanae's are, but they have pockets on both sides, more grommets, again I don't understand the grommets because I feel like you have to break your yarn somewhere, but they also have other pockets with spots for pins or crochet hooks, which I think is awesome. I am, along with bags and scissors, come pins. I can never have enough pins. So I think it's really nice that they have a way to separate everything. Enamel pins, because enamel pins, and then they also have this really nice, um, strap. I've seen people walk and knit with it on their wrist like this. Again, I will never be one of those people. Mm. Ever. So fringe supply. Next comes Matter Root Main. But I think they just go by Matter Root. These are another awesome project bags. So these are completely different from the rest and I probably don't use them as often as I should, but they have a wonderful purpose. They're lightweight, so they are stuffable. So Matter Root makes various kinds of project bags. They're all screen printed and sewn. They have this wonderful webbing and then their hook is they make them trundle bags. Instead of having a drawstring, you basically stuff your project in there. You can either walk and knit, again, not me, or you roll up your bag like so, and then you snap it close. So your project's not going to go anywhere. You don't have to worry about it falling out. You don't have to worry about yarn getting stuck in zippers. Um, they're great. The only downfall is these small ones don't have pockets. So you don't really have a way to separate anything. But again, if you're one of the small zipper bag people that keep all your notions separate, then you just throw this in there along with your project and you roll it up and call it a day. So you still have everything you need, but here. I have two of their bags. This is their smaller trundle bag. It's quite petite. I think you can maybe fit like a sock project or probably a hat. Just something small, accessories. They're a medium one, comfortably holds. I have most of a sweater. Well, I shouldn't say most. Some of a sweater in this one and an extra skein of yarn. So they have various sizes and various um, styles. But on top of that, they also, their screen printing and their design choices are just Chef's kiss. Next, oh yeah. Okay, another spoils bag to myself. Where'd all your money go, Claire? It went into project bags. Again, this one is my much loved twill and print bag. The effort and the detail that goes into these bags is beyond me. Um, it's just, they're everything. This was before Tiffany started dyeing yarn. She was mainly bag making and the fabric is screen printed in her designs and then she would cut the fabric and make these bags. She has bucket bags and other various styles of project bags and I just, I needed one. It was just the way it was. Um, I don't remember why I stopped using this one. I think it was out of fear of messing it up or spilling something and staining it and it just being beyond repair. They are pricey, but they are worth every freaking penny if you want a spoil yourself and support a small business. 
item. This is, I'd say they're top of the line. And they're, I think she's in Canada, so they're Canadian made. But I mean, man. So starting with details, you have this buttery soft leather. She has her stamped tag right here. That is also her flair. That is her design. And that one is Tiffany's design as well. She has enamel pins. She has hand dyed yarn. She has screen printed clothing, um, t-shirts and hoodies and things like that. Awesome. Um, so going inside the bag, we have pockets. Let's see if I can just do it this way. Can you guys see that? We have a bigger pocket here. And then on the other side, she has multiple pockets. So she has a larger pocket here. And then she also has pen or crochet hook pockets over here, which is great. She uses a heavier canvas and then she has multiple pockets on the outside, which is just pockets. So there's one, two, she even utilized the sides. So there's pockets there. So that's four. And then there's a big pocket in the back. If you want to put a notebook or something like that in the side. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pockets on this bag. Again, I stopped carrying it or using it altogether because I was terrified of messing it up. <laughs> that's just, that's just the way it is. I should probably use it more because it's, it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. Again, Tiffany screen prints the bags and then she sews them and just meticulous amount of detail that goes into these. I will link her in the description box below. So getting into tote bags. This is a Ritual Dyes backpack. I bought this one on a whim at a Maryland Sheep and Wool thing at the Knot House Yarns. And then we went to Maryland Sheep and Wool and I needed something to carry all my crap in. So I bought a bag. It's great. It's not terribly functional. It doesn't have pockets or anything, but if you want to a way to carry your stuff on your back, this holds. A tremendous amount of stuff so that's I mean that's half a sweater and it doesn't even take up half the bag and then we'll just say for giggles the needle case and a notions pouch I mean it's it's got a lot of room so That's that. This is, I think the straps could be different. The straps kill your shoulders. If you load the sucker down, all you have is this webbing. And when it's strapped over your back, it's, it's not terribly comfortable, but the design is awesome. Like that is, come on, that's clever. So ritual dies. And then last but not least, this is probably my most used bag. Um, if I travel and I need to carry a tote bag, this is, this is the one. This is the Twig and Horn Project tote bag. It has a removable shoulder strap. It has the double shoulder strap here. I guess this is the crossbody strap, as I would call it. It has pockets. They were very generous in the pockets. It has a center compartment here, which I love. Again, grommet situation. Um, and the center console goes all the way down. I think they're newer bags. It's removable, but I'm not sure. Uh, don't mark my words on that. And then it has pockets on the other side. So 
It has space for pretty much everything you'd ever need. It is heavy and thoughtful in the details as well. It's made in America. It has outside pockets. I also have their wool one, their gray wool one. Um, another fancy bag I never really use because I'm scared of messing it up. It's probably one of my things <laughs> I spend money on things and then I'm worried I'm going to ruin it. I was, the, I was that way with sweaters for the longest time, but I spend time or money on something and I'm scared it's going to get destroyed because I had younger children or dogs and I just, it gets tucked away because <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to it. And well, kids, that's why we can't have nice things, right? So that is the twig and horn project tote bag they are it's just a lovely lovely bag so with that said we are going to jump into my currently used items this is my french supply bucket bag that I leave by the couch. Instead of having a basket, this is pretty much my, this is my basket. And I'm not gonna lie, I cleaned it out before I decided I was gonna share it with you all because it turns into a catch-all and it's, it's awful 90% uh, of the time. There's, Usually dog hair and random things that get thrown in here because I'll wind up on the coffee table. <laughs> I'm tired of looking at it. So if it's put away and not on a flat surface, then my mind's usually a little happier. So it just gets thrown in a bucket or a bag or in the ottoman that has a uh, storage space inside of it. <laughs> so. If you ever come to my house and start snooping around, you're probably gonna find a lot of random crap in a lot of really random places. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so what's in my bag? We discussed Matter Root. This is one of their larger trundle bags, which I think are, like I said, their screen prints are just, they're my total cup of tea. I love earthy and plants. And this is, I mean, that's like the epitome of, well, I think most of what they have, which is just awesome. So their larger trundle bag does have a pocket inside of it. And this one right now is hosting a raglan pullover. I just wanted something familiar. So I cast on a top down raglan. This one is going to be similar shaping to the one I'm wearing, the Searchlight Raglan, which I'll link down in the box below. But this one's a bit different. It doesn't have cables and we plan on putting color work on the bottom of it. So that way it's plain and then there's a color work band at the bottom, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm, uh, I haven't done color work in a long time, so it's gonna be a nice change of pace. And then to close the trundle bags, like I said, you just roll it over. And then you snap it shut. Also inside of my basket bag is my notions pouch. This is where I keep all the little odds and ends that are also separated and organized inside. This bag is, I think it's Rifle Paper Co. The other bag I was talking about in the pile. The one, the floral. I think it's Rifle. I'm not sure though. So this is a 10A Casey. This is a lighter canvas, but just one of her little notions or soft pouches. This is the assortment of crap that I keep inside of it. So chapstick, nerd wax for all of my glasses wearing friends, 
retractable measuring tapes, stitch markers, larger odds and ends such as measuring tape, the tiniest snips that ever did live. I mean, they're stinking cute. I used to sell these in the Autumn and Indigo shop. I think I need to bring them back because they're just, the portability of them is off the charts. They're great because they fit in everything. And by technical rules, you can take them on airplanes with you. This also has my darning needle. The bent tip ones are my favorite because they just go into, I just think that they work better. They seem to find a, a better hold into finding where they need to go when you try to weave in ends. Let's see, what else is in here? We have cable needles. T pins for uh, when you're changing out needles, a repair hook, and some more odds and ends for my interchangeable needles. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and a sewing needle with thread because you never know when a kid's going to need it or need something repaired. Also inside of my Notions pouch is my favorite pair of scissors, my stork scissors. You can, they're not storks, it's a crane. You can find them in my shop online. They are my favorite scissors. They're just, they're nice and sharp. Pom pom maker, because a pom pom maker. And gauge rules, which are great for checking your gauge. I have this metal one from Susan Bates. Sorry, Susan Bates, but this was not, this thing is not my favorite tool. And technically I think I should just part with it. So this, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's got a bent tip. It keeps trying to focus on my face. And it's just, I don't know. It's not very good. It has a bent tip on it. It snags things. It's just cheap crappy metal. That's how I feel about that. Problem solved. So, <laughs> and a pencil, cause you'll never know when you'll need a pencil. So that is what's inside my Notions pouch. Okay, moving on. Hold on, we're getting hoarse. I also keep hand salve because you'll never know when you'll need hand salve. I think I went over these the other week. This is the hand salve that's inside my shop. It's a beeswax and lanolin. Uh, my hands dry out really bad, especially during the winter time. So I always have something for my hands inside the bag. You know, the time I told you about pins? Pins. Is it necessary to have that many pins? Probably not, but I will tell you that my favorite pins lately are the Pilot Frixion erasable pins. These things have become my jam. I use them for everything. And I used to use whiteout, but then I found erasable pins and now my life has been changed forever. I also keep colored pens and highlighters for notes and calendar jottings because I usually have a planner in here as well as a graphing notebook, but those got moved. Crochet hooks because I do occasionally crochet, believe it or not. Shiagu knitting needles. So also inside my bag, 
I have my sock needles as well as my regular needles. So I don't really use, well, I use these, the long ones for socks. I have a shameful amount of uh, knitting needle sets, <laughs> probably a lot more than one person should ever need, but I knit a lot and I found it more economical to buy whole sets than to buy extra tips. So the sock sets, um, I will say that I found I don't like knitting on nine inch cables. They are, I guess for not the fat fingered or the larger hands, I have fairly large hands and I just, my hands cramp and it's annoying. Like nine inch needles or cables with these itty itty bitty, guys, look at these. Like they are stinking tiny that is the whole size of the knitting needle these shorties are they're petite i don't knit with them much <laughs> if ever so there's those and then i have this lovely maxwell case that i picked up from magpie fibers I went to Stitches West. I had seen her, I've seen Damie post these on her Instagram back when she first released them and they were just another one of those like really nice, I need it. Given the amount of knitting needles that I have, I found it was probably useful to have one place to keep everything instead of the three or four separate kit like the Chiagu standard case that comes with them. So now I have this beautiful portfolio that is from Magpie Fibers and it just hosts all of my knitting needles. You can see here, I have several repeats that are not in use and I still have parts that are not being used. So I have plenty of room for all the needles. I have two standard sets, I think, that go from a size US 2 to a size US 8. And I think the larger set goes from a US 9 to a US 15. I don't use those often, but occasionally I get a wild hair and they do come in handy. So this is, this is my pride and joy, I guess, and probably one of the best investments I have made Here's a little pocket that I keep all of my cables in, though I do wish I had an envelope or something for each individual size because I have lots of extra cables and lots of 22 and 30 inches. So it's nice to be able to keep those separate, but this is the cable portfolio that I keep inside my knitting bag. It's made by Atomic Freedom and apparently uh, Magpie Fibers has like a whole line of this waxed canvas um, material in several colors and I guess we'll call them outfits. It's really nice stuff. So I think that's it for what's in my bag. Next week I am going to hopefully do a knit and chat. I think they're a great filler and they're really fun to be able to get to know um, the person behind the camera a little bit more, or I guess the person in front of the camera a little bit more. They are awesome for, you can ask business questions, you can ask personal questions, you can ask design questions. If you have a question you'd like to know, be sure to put it in the comments section. I posted a story on Instagram and nobody replied, so hopefully you have a few questions for me and I'll be able to answer them uh, next week during our session. As always, thanks for being here. It is wonderful to have the subscribers that come back every week. If you're new here and you don't wanna miss a thing, make sure you subscribe below. We have new content just about every week and we also have chips and tutorials that I like to post. So if you don't wanna miss anything, make sure you subscribe below. We really appreciate every single like and every comment. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful day in whatever part of the world you are. It is an overcast and very gray day here, but I plan on spending my afternoon working on that raglan sweater before the kid gets home from school and getting this set up and uploaded for you all. Until next time, we'll see you then.